Hey, what's up guys? Alex Khan here. And um, this is a great week for movies because, well, last week you had uh, Mission Impossible 7 with Tom Cruise. That movie was fantastic, especially the the action sequences. Fantastic. Um, and this week you have the famous Barbie movie and also the famous Oppenheimer movie directed by, by Christopher Nolan. So before I, I go into this, let me just say right off the bat, I know Oppenheimer is a great movie. I have not heard a single bad thing about Oppenheimer, except now because I was a little disappointed in Oppenheimer. Before I go into my thoughts on why I was disappointed with the movie, let me give you some background on me myself. Um, as a kid, probably around the age of five or six, that's when I started watching history movies religiously. I've been watching history movies nonstop every chance I could since I was five. Movies like The Vikings, 300 Spartans, The Longships, Alexander, Patton, Battle of the Bulge, 13 Days, Path to War. Um, I, I've watched pretty much every big, big Hollywood history movie. I've seen a lot of German history movies. I've seen a lot of Soviet history movies. Waterloo. Um, oh my god, like, I'm not even going to go on because I can't think of one right now. But I've seen a lot of history movies. History movies... Historical movies, that is my favorite genre of, of movie making. My, my absolute top, my favorite movie of all time is a history movie, and that is Alexander. So, that's one thing I want to say. I want, want to preface that before I start. And I also want to say, I even love Christopher Nolan movies. Inception, uh, Dunkirk, Interstellar, The Dark Knight Trilogy, Tenet. Those are all fantastic movies. Uh, Tenet, Interstellar. Inception, those are all very creative films, the way they told those stories. So let's go into this movie, Oppenheimer. This is actually a, a biopic, it's a character study on Robert Oppenheimer, aka the father of the atomic bomb, the, the Manhattan Project, where they, they raced against the Nazis, against uh, the, the Russians to make the, uh, the atomic bombs. We were the first ones to drop the atomic bombs, the first and only people to drop atomic bombs on, on a city during wartime. So that's what this movie is, and let, let me go into my thoughts on this movie. So I love history movies, I love Christopher Nolan, so what happened with Oppenheimer? That, that is the question. So to be very general, without giving you any spoilers, even though it's a history movie, I was expecting a lot more from Christopher Nolan. His movies like Tenet, Interstellar, and Inception, Dunkirk, those movies were brilliant. The, they were beautiful to watch, and they had a lot of creativity in the storytelling. For Oppenheimer, because I've seen, what, thousands of history movies in my lifetime, religiously, this movie felt like a dime in a dozen for me. It just felt very straightforward to me. There was nothing out of the ordinary about the way this movie was, was told, the story. There was nothing creative about it. There were flashes of creativity, flashes of brilliance. Like there was one, there was one, uh, one segment where Oppenheimer was looking at a bunch of people. He kind of spaced out for a moment and saw all those people looking ordinary at one point, and at the next point, they were they were victims of of atomic warfare. A, a cool piece of imagery, very horrific, uh, showing the horrors of of nuclear warfare, which Oppenheimer is is hugely uh, credited for or blamed for whatever you want to say so Oppenheimer and history movies I've seen so many this movie did not stand out to me but that's why I, I felt like it didn't really do anything for me I was expecting a lot more not just a straight dry uh, telling of, of Oppenheimer I've I've I already know the story of Oppenheimer I'm just curious um a lot of people have been praising this movie, like it was Christopher Nolan's what Magnus Opus. Have you guys seen many history movies? But I feel like if you had, this movie might not be as groundbreaking as you think, because there's been so many hundreds of history movies that were told in this exact same format. It was just a chronological telling of the story of Oppenheimer. And this with other biopics, it's just a chronological telling of, of whoever they're, they're talking about. So Oppenheimer is a three-hour-long movie. Um, I watched Barbie on, 
on on Wednesday, that was the 19th of July, that was an early advanced screening. The very next day, I made it a point to watch Oppenheimer. Um, the popular thing to do is to watch Oppenheimer first and Barbie on the same night. There's no way I could have done that, especially knowing that Oppenheimer was a three-hour long movie. There's just no possible way I would do that to myself. So I watched Barbie first, and then I watched Oppenheimer. So Oppenheimer, it just seemed really slow-paced to me. Um, it was probably about 100% dialogue. Well, maybe like 90% dialogue. And again, I have no problem with that, because there's so many movies I've watched, like like 13 Days or or Path to War, where it's just, it's just non-stop talking. But I felt that the dialogue in those previous movies were were much more engaging to me, um, more, more riveting. With Oppenheimer, I guess after so many years of watching movies like this, it just didn't do anything for me. Like, it, it was a good history movie, don't get me wrong, it, it was good, but because I was expecting so much more from Christopher Nolan, I just felt really disappointed in what I was hearing, and it just felt kind of dry to me. It just seemed too straightforward to me. And that freaking music, like, at first I liked it, but after three hours of this music invading dialogue scenes, I got kind of annoyed by the by the soundtrack. Seriously, they were inserting this music in places where there should not have been music. People talking people walking it's like why are they blasting this music at 100 percent when there's nothing happening on screen there was just no point to it so yeah i was a little i was a little upset no no sorry i was disappointed i was disappointed that i wasn't blown away by this movie i mean i'm sure the bomb would have blown me away but what i did like what i really liked was the guy who played uh, Oppenheimer with his name Cillian Murphy? I forgot his name. It's Cillian Murphy. He's he's been in a lot of movies. That guy, oh my gosh, that guy is a fantastic actor. Uh, Matt Damon turned in a great performance. So did uh, Robert Downey Jr. Everyone in that movie did great. I just think, well, Cillian Murphy, he was he was a standout. He he really uh, brought the performance home. I just think he was a really fantastic actor trapped in a mediocre movie. Now, again, this is just my opinion. I, I know that this is a great movie. Not, not, not me personally. I don't like this movie. But because of the consensus of everybody else who has seen this movie, because everyone's praised this movie, I know this is a great movie. So I'm a little sad that I'm not part of this wave of people who love this movie. I'm just really disappointed in it. It's just, for me, a dime in a dozen of other of other history movies to me. It, there's nothing uh, groundbreaking about the way this movie was told. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'm kind of sad in that respect, but I do plan to rewatch Oppenheimer probably next week because my friend wants to watch it. And I'm going to give myself another attempt to watch Oppenheimer because, you know, I owe it to myself. Give myself another chance because uh, when I watched Alexander for the very first time, I hated Alexander. I hated Alexander the second time I watched it. But the third and fourth time, I kind of came around, and Alexander ended up becoming my favorite movie of all time. That is a history movie that most people do not like. I like it. So as you can see, you know, my, my taste in movies is different than yours, obviously. I loved Barbie, by the way. I want to say that, too. Barbie is easily in my top 50 favorite movies of all time. Um, as a history buff, a film buff, someone who's seen history movies all my life... I just felt like Oppenheimer didn't do it for me. It just didn't it didn't stand out to me from the other history movies I've seen in the past. It was just point A to point B to point C. That's all I got from Christopher Nolan from Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. Again, you know, I loved his other movies. I loved I loved Dunkirk. Tenet and Interstellar and Inception. Oh my gosh, those movies were so damn good. They were so freaking good. So I'm gonna end this video now. Um and give me your thoughts on Oppenheimer. Am I the only one who didn't like Oppenheimer? <laughs> I feel bad, you know. I, I'm, I'm slamming this movie, but I, I know people love it. So it, it makes me sad to say that I didn't like this movie too. But yeah, this is a great week for movies. Go watch Mission Impossible 7. Go watch Oppenheimer. Go watch Barbie. Support movies.